This is a passage in The Craft of the Heart, which is one of John Lee's first books. Where he talks about six different personality types. In Thai, the word is jadit. The Pali term is jadita. There's the passion type, the aversion type, the delusion type, the intellectual type, the gullible type, and the worrying type. Now, it's obvious that he's uncomfortable with these, these categories. He treats them because they were in the standard Dharma textbooks that had spread all over, by, all over Thailand by that time. In fact, one of the reasons he wrote The Craft of the Heart was to take a lot of the teachings from the Dharma textbooks and treat them from the point of view of the forest tradition. So because these concepts were in the books, he had to treat them. He talks about them as the idea that each type has a particular type of meditation that's suitable for it. But then at the very end, he erases the distinction. He says, actually, all of us have these types, these tendencies. It's not that people are types, but we do have certain tendencies, certain habits that we've developed over time. And you should realize that you have a full range of habits, specifically a full range of defilements. And so it's good to have a full repertoire of techniques, a repertoire of skills. This principle applies to the meditation and it applies to daily life as well. Because we do have this tendency to type ourselves. And either we like the type or we don't like the type. If we like the type, you just say, well, I'm the person I am, and you have to, that's, you have to accept it. That's the way it is. It's the way I'm always going to be. As for other people who don't like the type they are, they say, well, maybe I'm too assertive, maybe I should be less assertive, or maybe I'm not assertive enough and I should learn to be more assertive in a general way. And that misses an important part of the teaching, which is instead of looking at things in terms of the sort of person you are, you want to look at a situation and say, what's the appropriate thing to do right now? Again, and this applies both in the meditation and in your practice outside of the meditation, where you practice when you're dealing with other people. It's not that you wake up in the morning and say, I should be more assertive, and you go through the day just being more assertive willy-nilly. It's learning to read the situation. When, what types of situations and with what sorts of people do you need to be more assertive? And how can you do it skillfully? I don't know how many warriors I've run into, people who just want to pick up a cause and fight it no matter what. Who haven't realized that the first principle in being a warrior is learning to choose your battles, realizing that some battles are just not worth fighting. So you don't waste your time, waste your energy. In other words, you want to be able to play lots of different roles, whatever role is appropriate for this particular set of circumstances, this particular defilement in the mind, or this particular situation outside. Learn to develop the skills and see that as a range of skills. Instead of looking at yourself as a type of personality, see it more as an issue of what range of skills you have and where your skills haven't yet developed, where they need more work. Because the fact that you've learned to be, say, unassertive in particular situations is maybe because it was the appropriate thing to do in those situations. And so you don't, don't want to drop that entirely. Just learn that there are other situations where you have to be more assertive. Or if you tend to have a kind of a rough and ready personality, realize that there are times when it's better to be a little bit more refined, a little bit more restrained. 
And so if, instead of acting out of the force of habit, you really want to look at the situation. You apply this outside for two reasons. One is because the habits you develop outside are going to apply to your meditation. And two, as Buddhists in the land of wrong view. Whether we like it or not, we often stand for Buddhism in our actions. Whether people know we're Buddhist or not is not the issue. Someday they'll find out. But then they say, well, is that how Buddhists act? You don't want them to ask that question. You want them to say, oh, Buddhists tend to act in a very appropriate ways. That's the impression you want to give, because it helps them, and it's part of your training too. Because as you get more sensitive to situations outside and learn that you can approach them with lots of different skills and not just one very limited set, then you can start applying the same principle inside as well. Sometimes as you're meditating and things get dry, it's, it might be wise to drop the breath for a little bit. I think of a topic that gives you a little bit more joy, a little bit more sense of in, more of a sense of inspiration in the practice. Sometimes thinking thoughts of goodwill can help provide that sense of inspiration. You can think of Recollect the Buddha. What a wonderful teacher we have in the Buddha. He was someone who had no need for anything from anybody, and yet he spent 45 years walking all over northern India to teach anyone who was ready to be taught. And he taught not because he wanted fame or he wanted recognition or he wanted approval from people. He taught because he had something good to share. It's really hard to find a teacher like that. The fact that we have that kind of teacher is something we should take joy in. Because there's nothing in the Dharma that's designed to rake money our way or that's designed to appeal to the, the defilements of the teacher. It's all straightforward truth, all straightforward beneficial teaching. As the Buddha said, the things he would teach were one, true, two, beneficial, and three, timely. So we're not here to see him in action, to see which teaching he would pull out in any particular situation. But we can learn from our own efforts. To find recollection of the Buddha inspiring, use it when you need it. Other times when the mind is getting a little bit too carried away with itself. You've probably heard many times from me there are times when desire can be part of the path, and you say, okay, any desire must be okay. Well, that's going beyond bounds. You've got to learn how to rein yourself in, exercise more restraint. In the teachings on Breath meditation, the Buddha talks about times when the mind needs gladdening, in other words, give it more energy, times when it needs steady. And this can include giving it more restraint, make it more solid, more still, more circumspect. And then times when it needs releasing, when you find yourself burdening yourself down with unnecessary worries, unnecessary cares. Learn how to drop them, release yourself from those burdens. So it comes down to learning how to watch your mind and see what needs to be done. Realizing that sometimes the, the amount of energy you have to apply to a problem is not the sort of level that you normally apply. There are some people who really like to take a macho approach that whatever defilement comes up in the mind, they're going to starve it. They, get, they go without food, they work themselves really hard, thinking that somehow through the austerity that it's going to burn the problem away. And that does work with some problems. And that can be one tool you use, one tool that you keep in your tool chest. But it can't be the only tool. There are other defilements that require more precision 
less effort, but a lot more maybe powers of observation. So you can understand where they're coming from. So it's always a question that you want to have a wide range of skills. That's the issue. And sort of thinking of yourself as a particular sort of person who either has to behave in a certain way or doesn't like the way you behave. Just look at it as a range of skills you have. You realize that okay, there may be some limitations on your skills. You've got to develop other skills as well, which may seem less in character. But you're not here to stay in character. You're here to, here to expand your character, expand your range of skills. Because that's a lot of why we suffer in life, is we don't have a full range of skills in how to approach greed, anger, and delusion, how to approach difficult people, how to approach friendly people. How to approach the mind when it's down, how to approach the mind when it's up. So instead of simply acting out of force of habit or saying, well, I've got to change my habits in a, more, in a very general way, you want to develop specific hab skills for specific situations. Learn how to read a situation and get a sense of what's needed. And as you develop your powers of observation in this way, you benefit in lots of ways, and the people around you benefit, too. Your actions are more appropriate. And you're not tied to the force of habit. In this way, defilements that were recalcitrant become a lot easier to deal with. Because they have lots of skills, too. If you apply only one approach to them, they'll, they'll know you. They'll see you coming from three miles down the road. Because you telegraph your punches. They have their tricks. You need to have your tricks, too. There are times when they'll respond to a harsh treatment. There are other times when they'll respond only if you treat them very gently. So don't let yourself be limited by your sense of who you are. Know your range of skills where you need more practice. But think of it as that, a range of skills. You need more skills to deal with more situations. And the question of who you are just gets put to the side. Because ultimately it's really irrelevant. All the Buddhist teachings focus on actions, not on types of people. more types of actions, the type of action that gives rise to suffering, the types of actions that can put an end to suffering. The Pentecore Rising, the Four Noble Truths, all the really big basic teachings are questions of action and result. That's how the Buddha wants us to look at things. That's what right view is all about, seeing things in terms of actions and their results. And then you take that insight and use it to develop all the skills you need, to, as wide a range of skills as possible. I remember once, when I first met a John Fu, I had a dream. I looked in his closet, and his closet was filled with all kinds of hats. And you put on a hat and you take on a different role. He had, he had a cowboy hat, he had a, a baker's hat, all kinds of hats in his closet. And as I got to know him, actually know him in real life, I realized that that's what he was. He had lots of different skills. And you could never really depend on what his reaction would be at a particular time. Or you couldn't predict it. You could depend on it. You found that he, would, he was doing the, trying to act in the most skillful way possible, given a particular situation. That's an aspect of right view that we tend to overlook, but it's really important. Work on your range of skills, work on your range of strategies. Because the defilements deal. They have their skills, they have their strategies. 
And if you establish yourself as a particular type of person, you're an easy mark. The wider range of skills you have, the harder it is for the defilements to catch you.